ready to give the announcements? Pastor Rod is California. He says he's at a conference, but I think he went surfing. Um, just real quick, you guys keep in prayer. Uh, VBS is coming up, and, and kids, our kids, other kids, people's kids. And, you know, it's a, it's a great outreach. It's a great time for the kids. If you guys can just keep that in prayer uh, throughout the week and, um, you know, with the teachers. And, man, I hope someone gets saved, you know. Hope someone gets saved, be it a parent, be it a child. Um, someone gets saved because what's all this for if it's not, you know, that people get saved and, and and go to heaven you know that's 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 the end game that's that's what it, that's what all this is about um also sunday we're having the the uh the plates the chicken plates the peruvian chicken peruvian sauce man it's good but it's for a good reason too you know it's to help out the dujes down in peru with the church and um, with the finances there and also provide the needs of the church that is down there and it's great you know if you guys get a chance get down there on a mission trip and and be a part of what the Lord's doing and and invest and that's what we're doing we're investing in, in God's work because um, that's what he calls us to do I mean yeah he can do it all himself but I think it's so awesome that he that he grabs us from all different kinds of walks of life, from all kinds of different areas and, and, and points us into one direction, to his work, his will, his way. So that's my, that's my announcements. Lord, we thank you for this time that we're able to just set aside, Lord, hear from you, hear from you, hear from your word. Um, and you use us, Lord, to, to deliver your messages. We, you use us, Lord, to share your heart, to share your, um, your character, that we may be like you, that we may even sound like you to a certain degree. We know it's the work of your spirit, Lord, and we ask you, O oh God, be here with us and speak to us in Jesus' name. So I'm going to I'm going to venture a little differently tonight um more of a topical study and so forgive me if you guys lose your place but one of the things that that I've been praying I was praying about Lord what am I going to what am I going to talk about what do you want me to share and um the same thing that kept coming up is notes don't usually use notes but one of the things that kept coming up is the calling of God when called when God calls and the people that God calls um, and, and and we all know we, we hear of different pastors we hear of different preachers we hear of different evangelists and um, many times we might get into a, a frame of mind as, oh, I wish I can teach like that. Oh, I wish I can preach like that. Oh, he's called an evangelist. He is, he, that's, you know, that's his job. Um, and sadly, I heard of a pastor uh, say that, because he had been in the ministry for so long that uh, a more junior pastor had nothing to share, nothing to teach him. And, and that, really, that, that really cut me in hearing this person say that. Not directly, it came in directly. So, but, but in a nutshell, that's basically what I'm saying. What, what can that guy teach me? 
and so I started digging around, started looking at, at this, started looking at, at the different people that God used, and it really cracks me up. Um, the, the, the people that God had called in the Old Testament. And, and Isaiah was called, and by his own admission, he had a foul mouth. Oh, I'm a man of unclean lips, and, and, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Well, I'm an angry driver, Lord, and I dwell in the midst of people of angry drivers as well. But the one guy that really got me was Amos. Israel had split up. He had the north and the south, and, and Amos was up north and minding his own business, doing his own thing. He kept sheep, and, and he had, you know, uh, he had trees that he took care of. He was a farmer and a, I don't know, he's an agriculture guy. <clears throat> and he goes down to Jerusalem, and he's laying out this message. He's laying out this message of doom and gloom. You guys have been wrong, and God's going to judge you. He's bringing these people out of the north, and they're going to—they're just going to lay waste. Some of you guys are going to die, some by by sword, some will by will die by uh, by famine, and some will die by pestilence, and some will be taken away in captivity. Thus saith the Lord. You know, and and, and in Jerusalem they had all these priests and all these prophets, and they were. You know, oh, you know, the Lord's with us, and everything's going to be great. You know, he's, he's uh, they're going through the religious sacrifices, the religious schedules that they keep. And this guy, this farmer, Farmer Bob, coming down here and telling us he's not a priest, he's not a prophet, and he and he's saying this stuff to us, you know. What is what is wrong with this picture? So this the high priest uh, Amaziah comes up and, and tells tells Amos and says, uh, "Hey, dude, you got to go, go back home, and do your searing up there, do your prophesying up there. We don't want to hear you." And I like what Amos, and he, and he explains himself in, in chapter 7. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, Listen, man, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord, gave, and the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. So in other words, he's saying, Amaziah, you're telling me this, but God told me to come and to say this. You could take it or leave it. I don't care. The Lord gave me a message. Didn't come from a certain pedigree. Didn't graduate from a great college, from a college at all. He was a herdsman. And he was a keep, keeper of sycamore trees, of fruit. He took care of fruit. He was, you know, animals and agriculture. That's talent. So Amos was working and being faithful in the things that he was, that he was called to do. He was called to take care of these animals. And God called him. Which brings great comfort to me because of the people that God uses. We don't need to be successful in everything we do. We need to be faithful in the things that God gives us to do. Amos didn't have the, the schooling, so he had no one really to emulate. You know, he had no one to, to look towards and say, I want to preach like that guy. I want to I wanna prophesy like that guy over there. He didn't have that. And in the book of Amos, when you read through it, there's all kinds of agricultural pictures and, and, and herdsman-type examples that he uses in his prophesying. So what that tells me is 
he uses the individual to get across God's message. He uses, God is exemplified, but the man is not lost in it. Man is not discounted. And, you know, we pray during, just before worship times and, and I've heard it said, oh, God, may we just disappear and you come up front. And I know what the heart is behind that. I know at the heart is, God, you're, may you just, you know, in front of their faces and all over their hearts and, 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 and talking to their spirit. But in all reality, though, God says, no, I want you to be the trumpet and I want to blow through you. I want you to be the sax, and I want to be the air that blows through you. I want you to be the instrument, but it's me that's going to make you sing. He doesn't, he doesn't put us aside. He includes us into it, and he uses our character. He uses our history. He uses our, our pedigree, or, you know, wherever we're from, he uses these things for his purpose and to get across a message that he wants to get across. And he uses people in a most unlikely way. Oh, Rachel, she was watering sheep, right? Before she was Isaac's wife, she was taking care of sheep. She was watering them. Joshua was helping Moses. Gideon was threshing wheat, if you want to call that threshing wheat. He was underneath in the wine press, tossing up wheat. He was afraid, but God grabbed him and used him. Ruth was gathering grain. Peter was catching fish, and Matthew was collecting taxes. And the list goes on and on. But I find it hilarious that he uses Peter to the Jews and he uses Paul to the Gentiles. You would think it would have been the other way around. You know, Peter was the fisherman, uneducated, big guy. You know, he's going to go lay the hammer on the, on the Gentiles who don't know God or anything about God. And, and Peter, you know, he can relate to them. And, and of course, Paul, the astute education and, and pedigree and, and all the, you know, accolades behind his name to the Jews, and they would pay attention to him. But he said, no, 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 no. I'm going to switch this up. I'm going to switch this up, and, and it's going to be more effective. And boy, hasn't it. Uh, we're here now because of it. And churches all around the world, and Christians all around the world, all around the world. Because of how he placed people strategically, purposefully. And that's why we're here. He, we're here with the same care and precise arrangement that he used the, the disciples and the apostles, he used us. Well, as you continue on in Amos, you know, they don't listen to him, but he was faithful. I'm going through uh, Jeremiah, and they estimated he was between 14 and 17 years old when he started his ministry. He says, God, I'm a, I'm a child. No one's going to listen to me. I guess the pastor who I referred to earlier forgot about that verse. I'm a child. No one's going to listen to me. But God used Jeremiah and, and it grabs me. He's known as the weeping prophet. And he uses Isaiah. And both of these guys, no one came to the Lord. No one repented. There was no repentance in Israel during those two, with those two uh, uh, prophets in their, in their calling. 
He doesn't call us to be successful. He calls us to be faithful. Are we faithful in what he gives us? God wants to use man. God wants to. He wants to be a part of our lives, in our lives, affecting other people's lives. He wants to use us. He wants to use each and every one of us. I know most of the people here. And I hope that this is an encouragement to you. That because you're, you may not be the pastor of a church, because you may not be the, the wife of a pastor, because you may... Yes, you are. All of the above. You got families that you're pastoring to. We have co-workers that we're pastoring to. We have neighbors. And we may not be actually doing it, but the calling is still there. No matter who God places in front of us, that's who we're called to. And the individualism that we have, if God wanted somebody else who was more eloquent, God would arrange for that person to be in front of the person that you're in front of at that time. If God wanted somebody a little bit more frank or hard, then God would call that person in front of the person that's in front of you at that time. God knows us. He's working with us, but he uses us where we're at. And he does it so gently that even when we mess up, he talks to us individually like, okay, Mike, this is where you went wrong. Dora told me that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but you know, I, I, I reevaluate conversations I have. You know, scriptures I use. Lord, was it with the right heart? The message got across. You're, you're, you're sharing with somebody or you're not. You know, don't make that mistake again. I knew you weren't going to do it, but I want you to feel it. You know, we didn't do something that we're supposed to do. Oh, God, is that person going to? I knew you weren't going to do it. But I want you to feel it. I want you to, to, to feel my heart. All right, Lord, bring that person back. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe I want that person to talk to someone else. Or someone else talk to that person. But whoever I bring to you, are you going to do it again? No, I won't do it. I won't walk away again, regardless of how uncomfortable I might feel, or foolish I might look, or the words just don't. I'm going to be obedient. That's all He calls for us to do. And so I want to encourage you guys and myself as well that when we wake up. Lord, I'm going to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. Lord, I'm going to be strong. Lord, help me to be strong. Because I got a whole big long track record showing otherwise. But with you, Lord, I know, I know because you died for me that you want to use me because you didn't take me after I got saved. You left me here. So, use me because we're all called to a course we're, we're all, we all have a course set before us Paul tells us in Acts 4 no I'm sorry jumped ahead of myself in Acts 20 24 but none of these things Move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course. That was his course. And in Corinthians, you know, it lists uh, this, this laundry list of trials and tribulations that Paul goes through. And he wrote all that before he wrote this portion here, before he said this portion. 
and Luke dictates it. He says that I might finish my course with joy. We are all given a course. And that course is, is a lane, like track and field guys. They're running in the lane. And we each have our lane. And we each have our own course to run that God has set out. And I like how he says that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. And we can all apply that to our lives. We can all apply that to our um, business practice. We can, we can apply it to the calling that we're at, that, uh, the job that we have, the employers that we have. We're all given a course. We're all given a responsibility by our Lord Jesus. How are we going to finish it? How do we want to finish it? He wants to finish it with joy. I want to finish mine with joy. I want to finish and be tired and say, okay, Lord, I did what you called me to do. Ready to go. Beam me up. You know, but I want to finish the course with joy and the ministry which I have received. We should not shortchange ourselves of what we have. Amos, Isaiah, Elijah, some great guys, some great, powerful men of God, massive, you know, and people made fun of Elijah because he was fat and bald. Well, I'm fat. I'm getting there. You know, they made fun of him and these bears came out and ate those people. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. You know, God takes care of his own, right? But John the Baptist was called the greatest of all the prophets. John the Baptist. Jesus, God himself, said, of all of these prophets and mountain men of God, the greatest of all, John the Baptist. But the least in the kingdom is greater than him. John was the greatest because all these prophets and what they did they all wanted to point to the Messiah. John the Baptist was called to say, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. That was his duty. That was his course, to point Jesus out. Behold. And that one that we're to behold resides in us. He resides in us. These guys didn't have that. They had the Spirit upon them who was also taken away. But Jesus said, I'm going to abide in you. I, I, I know I know that if we ever get a hold of what that actually means and the gospel that we have inside of us to share, when we, I think that when we get a hold of that to a degree that I, I think we would become so encouraged and so solid when, when things hit us in life I'm good when people come to us hey you know how, how are you how, how are you handling this situation in life um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, 
guess what I'm trying to say is that I, I know I'm guilty of it. Of not using the power that God gives me. Uh, of not using the the, the the power not to hurt or, or to be puffed up, but the power, the power to be secure, the power to be um, joyful in an unjoyful world, the power to, to, to be an encouragement to such a degree that a person cannot deny the power of God, regardless of how, of how they were raised or what they know or what they think they know. And not to live recklessly, but to the world, it would appear that way. You know, uh, to, to unbelievers, it would appear, what is wrong with that guy? I'm still working on that, of what that, all that means. But like in Ephesians, it says, all the blessings of heaven has been given to us. Really? Someone's got it wrong. Either I have all the blessings or I just don't recognize it. And I know I don't recognize it. The word is right. It's me that's wrong. And I'm not doing something. I'm not catching on to something that God says I have access to that I haven't grabbed a hold of. And, and and I want to. You know, I, I want to grab a hold of this. And I want to teach my kids to grab a hold of it. And I think it expresses itself in a way of boldness. This is where I wanted to go with this. In 4.13, Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I fall in that category. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And I guess it's when we have that, that grasp that God is in us, that the gospel is in our hands. It's the power of life and death is, is there. We have the responsibility to bring God to man, but it's God's responsibility or God's area to bring man to God. And after an encounter with anybody, a person, can they say, well, I know Mike hasn't been in school. He doesn't know, know a whole lot. Guy's been with Jesus, but he, but but he's and, and marvel at it, not just like you know, oh my goodness, he's a, he's you know he's a Jesus freak, but he's more like that guy been with Jesus and be moved by it, to be touched by it. Um. The son of Hamas leader in Canada got saved. And he said that a street preacher approached him. And this was a couple of years ago. And uh, he didn't know the guy's background or pedigree. He just walked up and told him that Jesus loved him. And the Muslims are aware of who Jesus is. He's in the Quran. And explained to him that regardless of what he did, that Jesus loved him, cared for him, and died for him. And, and he said it blew him away. He went, he looked at the Bible, looked at the Quran, and he had to make a choice, and he got saved. He looked at his life compared to the two books, and he, and he looked at the Bible and it touched him, and the Lord moved him, moved on him, and the man got saved. And he wouldn't, and he wouldn't back off of it. Hamas put out all kinds of hits on him. You know, his father was a leader of, of, of Hamas, and 
you know, he does, he does speaking engagements, but they don't say where he's going to be at. <laughs> he just said, hey, we got a special speaker. And then this guy comes up. Khalid something. Walid. That's his last name. Walid. And he speaks. Talking about the love of Jesus. Muslim terrorist. Loves Jesus. <laughs> You know, all because of one guy who wasn't Amos, wasn't Isaiah, wasn't Elijah, you know, just a guy on the street being faithful in his calling, doing what the Lord called him to do, doing what he promised to the Lord what he would do, and went out and did it. You know, What we're, we're here, we're being trained under the word, which is good. We're, 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 we're building our lives on the cornerstone who Jesus is. We, we, we want to walk in loving kindness. We want our thoughts to be um, in, in right judgment. We want our actions to be righteous. These things the Lord takes delight in. And, and we do these things but we've got to put them to action. We, we've, we, we've, got to, we've got to put it to work. There has to be an outworking. There has to be a, a performance. The outcome isn't up to us, just that we do it. The outcome, the Lord arranges, the, the Lord fulfills. John the Baptist, the greatest of all the prophets. Man. And Jesus says that we are greater than he is. That blows my mind. We need to pray for boldness because God has called all of us. The same calling that Isaiah and Jeremiah and all the other prophets and Amos and and, and Habakkuk and Obadiah and all these guys. The same God, the same calling. He calls us. And when we wake up, our lives are not our own. Our purpose is his. Because we love him. Because we want to love him more. And that's what it, that's the driving, the, the, the driving force. That's the, the fuel. It's got to be out of love. Because then hypocrisy will will show its show its head, or hardness. There you go. The hardness without love, it's hard. That's that's you know, gotta go kill your lambs. Oh, gotta go kill my lamb today. You know. Without love, then it's then it's then it's hard. It's religious. It's uh, tradition. I got to do it. Why do you do it? I don't know. I just got to do it. How long do you got to do it for until I die? Do you go to heaven afterwards? I don't know. Maybe. What? What are you doing it for? I'm, done. I'm doing it for a maybe. Only God knows. Really? Where did all this start? I don't know. How do you know it's a tradition? I don't know. I just always done it. Dude, tell me what you do know, will you? <laughs> this is what I know. I know that I have a relationship with God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I know that he died for all of my sins, the sins I performed in the past, the sins I'll perform in the future, and the ones I'm trying to get out of now, the ones I'm struggling with now, that it's all paid for. He has freed me from the penalty of sin. He is now freeing me from the power of sin. And when I die and go be with him in heaven, oh God, let it be 
I will be free from the presence of sin. And so will you. So will us. And so what do I do in the meantime? Man, I share it. We, we, we've got to share it. We've got to be the, the Amoses and the Jeremiahs and the Abel. Blood cried out to the Lord while he was dead. Got to be the Abels. Lord, I want, I, I want to have fellowship with you so much so that it will make my brother sick until he kills me. You know? I don't think he did it intentionally. I just think he did it so wholeheartedly that he went and worshiped because he saw his dad sacrifice. That, that Abel went with the same intensity, with the same love, with the same faith. Look, I'll take the stinking lamb. Yes, Lord, yours here. I, I want your presence. I want a relationship with you. I want to be cleansed of my sin. Lord, thank you. And Cain, it gnawed on him. That he saw his brother coming back with blood on his hands, a tear in his eye, and a smile on his face just like his father. And, and Cain couldn't stand it. That he would approach God on his own terms. No. I don't want to approach like, like Cain. I want to approach like Abel. I want to approach like he would, he, the Bible calls him a prophet. And we share that like, man, you guys can have that same peace on your face as well. And no matter what happens, because you change course, and, and yes, the, the devil, the world, and your own flesh come against you, the Lord will be there with you, never leave you nor forsake you. And you know what, brother? Neither will I. I'll be there to help you. I'll be there to pray for you. I'll be there to... You know, I'll be there. And if I can't be there, another brother will. Another brother or sister. You will not be alone. Because God calls us to be a family. And we are a family. We are a family. And it's a beautiful family. And the invitation's open to anybody and to everybody. And we've got to take that message because that's what God has called us to do. When it's all said and done, the nuts and bolts, is, is we have a message of hope, a, a message of life, to go to a hopeless world and a lifeless world. And they know they need it. And we just hand it out. Just give it away. Just give it away. And as the Lord fills us up, we give it away. The, the love that we need, oh, we can't conjure that up. You know, because we're people, we're selfish. And we got to give that away. The fruits of the Spirit. You know, it's for other people to eat from. A tree doesn't grow an apple for him to eat it himself. The fruit of patience, of, of loving kindness, of joy, of peace is for those around us. It's for others to enjoy. That's our message. That the Lord works in us and grows us and we start to bear fruit for those around us. He called all of us. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Because we're all a Jeremiah. We're all Amoses. Right? We're Amos, not aimless. Amos. We're all Obadiahs, Habakkuk's, Malachi's. That's us. He calls us to do the job, basically, that the Israelis, the Jews didn't do. They held God to himself. We're not to hold God to ourselves. And as much as he fills us 
we got to give it out. Because the time is coming when the Lord takes center stage and when he comes, I don't want to be living in the question mark. When he comes, I want to be looking for him. And when he comes, I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And I pray that for each and every one of us. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God, for such a simple message, for such a simple um, responsibility. Lord, fill us, oh God. Fill us and help us in our weakness because when we're weak, you're strong. When we're not, you are. And God, as you fill us and as we are loving and caring, may we also be bold, Lord. Sometimes I think it's more difficult for us to be bold to step out in, in, in an area that we're uncomfortable, especially in this day and age where, where truth is, is just, it's so ambiguous. It, it's, so, it's up to the individual. It, it's, people are determining their own truths, oh Lord. But you, oh God, is true. Your word is true. You love us so. You told us. It's your truth, Lord. And 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 give us that boldness, Lord, to, to share that, to hand that out. And let the results, Lord, be in your hands. May we just have that peace that the results is in your area of responsibility. It's your area of operation. We hand it out, Lord. But what happens to it is in, is in your hands. And we know nothing is by mistake. Oh, God, you're so good. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing, for allowing us to be involved in your work as, as we're fumbling and fumbling and, and, and just, you know, so uncoordinated, Lord, in the things of the Spirit. We're like a gentle father, a loving dad. You look at us and you go, good job, son. Good job. Let me fix it. Father, we thank you, Lord for this opportunity while we're here. And we pray, come quickly, oh God. Come quickly. In Jesus' name, amen.